Uh, first of all, I'd just like to thank um, Saul and the Canatec team for a fantastic couple of days here uh, in Cape Town and, and for the great work that, that, that they've done over the last uh, couple of years in really building this platform and fostering global uh, collaboration. So massive uh, thank you to, to Saul and the team. Um, by, by way of introduction, um, my name is uh, Sibs Baba. Um, you know, the, the uh, surname is a click, um, and it's a challenge to everyone here to, <laughs> to learn how to say that before flying back home. <laughs> uh, so well done, Jim. Good, good, uh, good, good push. Um, I'm the co-founder and CEO of ACCA Group, or Africa Cannabis Advisory Group. We are an investments, advisory, research, uh, and distribution company focused on the Africa cannabis uh, opportunity. Prior to starting ACCA, I was um, an investment banker uh, in the UK for, for eight years. Um, I focused primarily on the African market uh, in, uh, in the UK. Uh, and a significant portion of my uh, specialization during that time was helping African governments, corporates, uh, infrastructure projects raise capital. Uh, so everything from sort of $5 million tickets all the way up to $1 billion uh, transactions. Um, I'm originally from Eswatini or Swaziland, uh, which is uh, another a small landlocked country that is uh, in, in, uh, in South Africa and Mozambique. Um, and um, not much happens in my part of the world. It's a very, very, <laughs> it's a very, very uh, uh, remote part of part of, uh, part of Africa. Um, but this is a picture of Omfloshani. Um The one thing I can, you know, guarantee you is that uh, if you look at some of the green in the background, uh, you'll find some of the best cannabis strains uh, in the world there. Um, and so many, um, many um, sort of families from from where I'm from. From where I'm from uh, have relied on cannabis for decades in the way of uh, economic income. And so in many ways, my decision to come back to, um, to Africa and to go into the cannabis sector has, has been very much going back to uh, my roots. So today, um, I'm going to unpack a little bit about um, what I think is required uh, for Africa um, in terms of some actionable points from mainly a policy perspective in order to really um, be able to draw a critical mass of capital that's really going to be needed to unlock the potential of the cannabis sector. So we all know that um, Africa has many, many advantages when it comes to uh, cannabis cultivation, uh, the large amounts of arable land, um, the great microclimates, affordable labor costs, and so forth. Um, however, these advantages um, in and of themselves are not going to uh, draw the required capital to really make, uh, to move the needle in the African cannabis story. And so, um, and there's a couple of reasons for that, I'll just touch on two. Number one, South America. Um, South America has many of the, um, the comparable advantages that, uh, that Africa has, except it's much closer to North America and has stronger trading relationships uh, with North America. So it's a much easier place for um, Canada's capital to find a home. Um, and number two, the recent sell-off in cannabis stocks that have experienced over the last um, couple of months, I think have really changed the psychology of the uh, cannabis uh, investor. Um, I think cannabis investors are a lot more focused on fundamentals. Um, they're a lot more focused on routes to market. And they're a lot more focused on the regulatory environment uh, under which cannabis companies will be operating. We see in Canada how that's hampering uh, growth and uh, development of the sector in the way of distribution uh, via retail outlets. And so all of this will be under a lot more scrutiny. And um, that's why the stakes are a lot higher now. Uh, for Africa to get this right. So I'm going to be discussing five, five uh, points um, on, on, this, uh, on, on what exactly Africa needs to do to get this right. Um, number one, bold and smart uh, policy, uh, which will be the foundation for investment and trade roadmaps. Number two, intra-Africa trade and 
integration. Number three, community conscious business models. Number four, cannabis applications solving African problems. Uh, and last, uh, finding a home for the black market. So um, I think a lot of countries right now are actually at a great advantage in terms of entering the cannabis sector and setting uh, policy and frameworks for, um, for the sector to succeed. We have um, a broad range of case studies, live case studies, from across the world on um, what has worked in the way of legalization, um, where are some of the challenges and, and roadblocks, um, and countries, African countries are in a unique position right now to calibrate all that information uh, to, toward the local uh, setting and set um, policy that will help them leapfrog um, the, um, the early stage of, uh, of legalization. And one idea that we've been discussing uh, in, in depth with a number of uh, governments is around having a centralized cannabis front office um, uh, unit of sorts. Uh, this unit would be responsible for uh, research, it would be responsible for uh, collaboration, uh, strategic partnerships uh, externally, and it would also be responsible for working with the various ministries within government um, and helping them uh, draft smart policy for, for the sector. Number two is around regional integration and trade. So um, according to the Brookings Institute, only about 20% of African exports uh, are to Africa. This number is around 60% in Asia and 70% uh, in Europe. So it's very clear that Africa is punching well below its weight when it comes to um, unlocking its own economic value. Um, one really encouraging development in this area is the, is the um, African Continental Free Trade Agreement, which um, came into force in May 2019. This will create the, the, world's, single, the world's largest single um, market, 1.2 billion consumers, 2.3 trillion uh, in GDP value, and 55 countries all under one single economic uh, trading zone. Now, outside of the natural um, or expected benefits of the African Continental Free Trade Agreement around compar co um, comparative advantage um, production and uh, value chain processes throughout the continent, um, this certainly makes Africa a great market to target in the way of selling uh, and developing products. Thirdly, community conscious business models. Um, I think we, over the last sort of 10, uh, 10 to 20 years, the world has gone through uh, uh, an evolution in how companies are ran and managed and what defines success. We've seen um, global inequality um, uh, cause massive unrest throughout the world from uh, protests to, um, to civil unrest to coups um, and to protectionist policies uh, that have been seen, seen as a means to, uh, to, to sort of push back on, on, uh, on, on some of the consequences of inequality. And so the businesses of the future, and particularly in Africa, are the ones that are going to be able to, um, to have community buy-in and to, and, to, um, and to really have the... Uh, the community in which they operate and fully invested in that business. Um, and so there's many examples of how this translates um, from e uh, equity participation at a community level uh, to um, benefits such as healthcare, education, and the like. A case study of where this has been done exceptionally well on the African continent uh, is in Botswana, a company called uh, Debswana, which is a joint venture between the government uh, of Botswana and De Beers uh, Diamond Mines. The um, company has done exceptionally well in having almost complete buy-in from the, uh, the population in Botswana and particularly the co uh, communities where it operates. Um, it was the first uh, company to offer ARVs to HIV positive patients and their, um, and their families and it's built extensive networks of schools and hospitals um, where, they, where the companies operate and, and uh, has won numerous international awards for its great work in, in this regard. And so I think on the cannabis side, this is a great uh, model for us to, to think around 
uh, in terms of how we can apply it to, to Africa. Um, fourth, I'd like to also um, just talk a little bit about uh, the applications of cannabis in the African context uh, and how we can focus on um, using cannabis to solve African uh, needs. And I think the, the previous panel also touched on this point in that the, the, the typical business model that we see um, at Acre Group when we speak to entrepreneurs is you know, the dream of being able to export oils to Europe. But very often um, we hear a little about in the way of interest uh, to target the domestic economy on the industrial hemp side uh, and also on the medical side. Um, and so the, um, the African Development Bank has actually set aside north of 24 billion um, itself and a few international partners to deploy into the agri-sector in Africa. Um, and so our view is that a significant portion of that, or definitely some portion of that, is expected towards, to go towards the cannabis um, sector. So the entrepreneurs that are positioning for, for, this, uh, um, for, for, the, for that trend, I think will do really, really well focusing on the domestic economy. Lastly, finding a home for the uh, black market. I think um, the um, cannabis cultivation is ingrained in the fabric, social fabric of many African communities. It's uh, similar to where I'm from, in Plosheni, uh, in Swaziland. Uh, there, are, there, are, there are millions of Afri other Africans who have, to, who have depended on this crop for uh, sustenance. Um, and so, Finding ways in which the black market can integrate into the legal market um, is of uh, utmost importance. The, um, the, uh, the benefits are not only uh, economic for, for those communities and villages, but I think you also have a situation where uh, individuals come into the formal economy in the way of uh, having IDs, uh, access to banking, credit, uh, and the like. And further down the line, I think the recreational market in the way of branded products and tourism will also be another um, uh, advantage. So um, to conclude, um, Africa has done exceptionally well over the last 10 to 15 years to go from a continent dependent on aid um, to a continent that has six out of 10 of the fastest growing economies uh, in the world. However, a lot of this growth hasn't been inclusive, and I think the big challenge for Africa will be lifting millions of uh, uh, individuals out of poverty and bringing them into the real economy. Um, the cannabis market gives us a real intangible uh, opportunity to, to do that. It's going to take um, e effort from everyone in this room. Um, on the Africa side, I know it's especially in the private sector, it's, uh, you know, it's, very, it's an uphill battle at the moment. Uh, I have um, many kind of therapy sessions with some of our clients at Acre Group about you know, what exactly it's gonna take to, to uh, actually succeed in the sector. Um, but I think with our concerted efforts and our focus, um, we'll be able to um, galvanize African polit uh, political leaders to, um, to set the framework that's gonna be required to, for this industry to succeed. All right, thank you.